start by sharing my screen with you guys here on this lovely Friday. Okay, everybody. So as of yesterday on our class uh, website, I updated what we did yesterday, uh, how we continued our raise example. And I actually put now a link to the video. You probably see it in Teams as well, but it was a link to the video of what we actually did in class yesterday. So if you need to go back and look at it, you certainly can. I will do the exact same thing with today as I'm recording this and I'll put it uh, here under Friday. I'll say how we continued our raise example possibly finished it today. I don't know. I don't think so. I think I don't want to go too quickly through this stuff. I think we can probably also do this a little bit on Monday and actually we're well ahead of schedule. On Monday, I had planned that we'd be doing the arrays example. As a matter of fact, I actually planned that we'd be doing it all the way up to next Friday. We won't. We will definitely be done by either Monday or Tuesday of next week. And therefore, then I will be give you most then of the remote learning period as work periods. So in general, what will happen is you guys will log in for attendance and then I'll be on Zoom to help you guys with anything you need. The other thing I might do next week after we're done the example and after you guys have a couple days to work is I might go through one of the erase programming problems, like walk right through it to give you guys that option as well to get some assignments handed in for the erase unit. But there's going to be lots of time for you guys to work on that. And if you're having technical troubles or stuff like that, that's stuff we can address next week. Let's focus today on getting the arrays example kind of further along, if not right to the end at this point. Now, if your example is a little off track, you can go to the GitHub page, as you already know. And from the GitHub page, if you go to Computer Science 30S, you could theoretically download the entire uh, example at this point today. But most likely what you're probably going to need to do is just go in and maybe grab a little piece of code that maybe your example doesn't have or a comment that maybe you didn't get yesterday or maybe one of the methods that used to output the array, etc. OK. So before we get started, let's take a look at where we are in this arrays unit. So our checklist went that I wanted to teach you guys what an array is. OK, so that involved me kind of explaining to you guys. We drew some pictures of what an array was. I showed you some PowerPoint stuff you have. If you need to, if you're still not sure what an array is, you can go to my website. You can read it off my website. You can read it off the PowerPoint. You could rewatch a video to understand what an array is. Then once we went to our example, we started creating arrays and code, declaring it. We started using arrays, seeing what we could do with it with the code. We encountered some errors that could potentially come up going out of bounds on the array. We learned how loops can be put together with arrays, specifically the for loop. And as of yesterday, I'm going to put a check mark here. We learned how we can use arrays pretty much seamlessly with methods. And I'll just show you here as well. Um, that the, what we learned is you could use arrays as inputs and arrays as outputs to a method, okay? So all of that we talked about and all of that has been incorporated into our example. So just sort of recalling where we went from the start here. So we started by creating a variable so we could compare it to a variable. Then we created our first array and then we put stuff in the array. And there's a lot of comments here, hopefully explaining all these little pieces of code. Then we created another array and we saw a little option that you could resize the array, but there was sort of a potential that if you did that, it could wipe it out. And then we created a third array. This array we made and filled all at the same time to give another option for arrays. We talked about arrays could be also be constants. And we made another array and then we started using that array with the for loop. So looping through the whole array. And you saw ways to do that, two different ways to do that. One way is more of a preferred way using this dot length feature. And then as of yesterday, we used arrays with methods by passing an array to a method and returning an array from a method. So we wrote these methods output, which takes an array as a parameter. We also wrote another version of output and a version called convert, which not only takes an array as a parameter, but returns an entire array. And then even one that just makes a return of a whole filled up array of random numbers. And so that's our example at this point, okay, with all that in there. So the final piece of this unit 
on arrays is actually something a little more complicated, but is part of arrays. And that is um, the idea. Uh, wait a second, let's go down here with teams. Anyways, I will. the idea of a multi dimensional array. So I want to talk about that for a second here, and then we'll get to our example. Uh, first, I just wanted to show you guys real quick. I'm just going to go through this very quickly. The stuff we covered in our example is also in the notes. If you want to read a little bit more about it, like the types of errors we talked about, like going out of range or out of bounds. There is some stuff in the notes where I show how, like when the code gets written, make an array size five. If you try to access one spot before or after, you're going to go out of bounds. That's the kind of error you're going to get. I talked about arrays with methods and how you can return them. There's some examples in the notes. I actually don't think they're as good examples as the ones we did, but they're in the notes. If you're still confused, you can look through that as well. Okay. So all that's in there. I'm just skipping through it just so you know, we talked about all of this stuff um, last class. So it's all already in there. It's a little old, actually. The stuff we did is a lot more new, sort of better code. There is some example of code how to search through an, an array. Um, I'm only mentioning that like if you do find you take on a programming problem where you have to search through an array and you're not sure how to do that, you could look in the notes. There's an example of a little finding method there. There's actually a much simpler version of it Oops, right here on this slide. You can see it's like just a couple lines of code to search an array. Okay, This is the new concept I wanted to introduce to you guys. The concept of a two-dimensional array. Okay, so what do I mean by this? What I mean by a two-dimensional array is essentially what we're talking about is an array filled with other arrays or an array of arrays. The way to visualize this is think of it like a grid or a table that has rows and columns. But if you think of it even, even further, right, this particular piece of it right here, and actually let me uh, make sure I can make that a lot bigger. If I just look at what I've outlined here in blue, Right, you just ignore that number right there. That would be just like an array, right? You could think of that just like an array. Here's spot zero, one, two, three. But now what you could think of for each spot in the array would be its own array. And that's what you can think of here. So this is also an array that's stored at that spot. So that's what I mean by it's an array of arrays. The fancy name for this thing is we generally call this thing a matrix. A matrix can be thought of as a single array where every element in the array is another array. Now we can create this basically the same way we create other arrays. So let's now go back to our example and let's go back to right after we finished with this stuff. And let's use this to now build, I'm going to put in a comment, multi-dimensional also known as a matrix, okay? Or uh, you could think of it as an array. Whoops. Um, I know what I did typed. I hope you guys are giggling of arrays. That was an accident, okay? So it's a matrix. It's an array of arrays. It could be thought of as... Um, multi-dimensional array, a matrix, an array in arrays, an array filled with other arrays. That's another way you could think of it, okay? You could also think of it as a 2D array, okay? Two-dimensional, multi-dimensional. Oops, I realized I just did that. Multi-dimensional array. Okay, 2D word matrix. I think that's the best way to think of it, is to think of this thing, this multi-dimensional object, as a matrix. Okay, so we're going to start by creating some constant, constants to use when building the matrix. Okay. 
These are not needed to, to, to build or to declare a matrix, but they might help in understanding it. Okay, so let's make some constants. A final integer, the total number of rows. And let's make 30 rows. We're going to make this thing a little bit bigger, okay? So when I say rows, this is a, a I'll put the word visualize this in quotes because when I say visualize, it's it's not realistic to think that this thing is building it the way we think. But if I think of, I know what it's going to be. It's going to be this grid thing. Like that's what it's going to look like when I say it visualize we can visualize it as this kind of grid right this. Okay. when i say rows you could think of this as this dimension that that is row this is a row this is a row this is a row okay so rows is a way to visualize what we are building Actually, let's put that comment line right here. Okay, so I think that was useful. We're making constants to visualize what we're building. So this is um, a dimension. Going down, right? Like rows go down. You could also think of it like the, if you're a math person, it's like the y axis. That's another way to think of it is the y axis. Again, so if you're thinking of this thing, up down axis is, or axes, is the y axis. Left right axis is the x axis. Like this is the x coordinate. This is the Y coordinate. So when I say rows, I could have also said Y here in a, in a way. Now I'm going to make a final int columns. And I'll make it 40 columns. Okay. So 30 rows, but 40 columns. Okay. So this is like a dimension going uh, down, um, but this would be the dimension going across. It's like an x-axis, okay? So that's a way to visualize it. So if I say it's 30 rows going down, oops, it would be like this. There'd be 30 rows going down on this thing. If I say it's 40 rows going across, then I'd know, oh, it's about 40 rows not rows, 40 columns going across and 30 rows going down. Again, you could visualize it as, well, this thing going down, that's like my Y axis. And this thing going across, that's like my X axis. What matters is you're able to kind of visualize this, okay? I'm gonna now build, we're gonna now create or declare a matrix by going well, we're going to switch to the data type character, a character matrix. You create it by putting not one set of square brackets, but two sets of square brackets. Okay. So I'm going to add that to the comment. Adding multiple sets of square brackets. Um, a set for each dimension. Okay. Um, we'll we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. So I'm going to name my matrix matrix equals a new character. So it's, in a lot of ways, it's <coughs> excuse me, it's just like a regular array. It's just now I'm putting in two sets of brackets. 
inside these two sets of brackets, I have to put the dimensions, which I now realize I misspelled here, or the size. But when it was a one dimensional array, it only had one size, how long it is. Now I need to put in two dimensions. So I'm going to put in rows, columns. So it helps me visualize what this matrix looks like. Now, for the purposes of this example, I'm just going to take that down to three by four. Okay. So if we Three by four matrix. We're talking about the rows by the columns. It would be put this in quotes seen as dot dot dot. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to draw out what this would theoretically look like. Okay. So the thing would be called matrix. Okay. Start off, and there would be a row zero. Okay. Set that one. And at row zero, would be the spot that would go up to where it ends. But there'd also be a column zero right here. Then right beside row zero would be column one and column two and column three because there is four columns, right? One, two, and three would mean that there are four columns. I'm just going to make these a little bit bigger. Okay. Okay, so then right here, we still don't know what's inside the matrix, so there's really nothing inside of it. Okay, so that, that. Okay, so that would be row zero, but then there'd be another row. Actually, I don't need that one. This would be row one. Okay. this row two and row three right so oh sorry there wouldn't be a row three okay because we said there would be three rows so that would mean it would go zero whoops one two there wouldn't be a third row because that's what we said here three rows four columns is a way to visualize this thing okay so right here have our rows we would have three of them, three rows, okay? Up here, columns. And we had four columns, right? So if we visualize this as a three by four matrix, three rows, four columns, this is a way you could theoretically visualize it, okay? It's an array of arrays. It's the way a matrix could be built there. That's a way to visualize this structure that we are building. Okay. So we have created a matrix in that way. Okay. So um, in the notes, I have this as well. So I show this matrix array of arrays. For example, you could visualize it that uh, the way we see uh, back here. Now, I will get into some of the fancier things about matrix, matrix. By the way, the plural of matrix is matrices, including the fact that you can actually get three-dimensional arrays, which would be visualized like this, okay? But that means it has a row, it has a column, and or it has a width, it has a height. That's another way you can visualize it, okay? You can also visualize it as uh, rows and columns, Okay, but you can also visualize it as width and height. I think I'll have to add that in as one of our comments. Matrix row and 
also be visualized as the matrix. So if we're thinking about rows, it's the height of the matrix. Okay. And I'm going to back that up with a matrix column can be visualized as the matrix width. So these words we picked, rows and columns, they don't really matter. What matters is that we are building a structure that the computer can keep track of lots of stuff in. And however we visualize it matters to us as programmers, not really to the computer. The computer just stores memory in there. But it's important for whatever problem solving we do that if we're going to use a matrix, we kind of have to understand how it's going to work. So matrix matrices can be tricky. To, to visualize and to work with. So that's what I mean by this is a little more of an advanced part of this unit called arrays. In theory, this could be its own unit because it's kind of a, another level of concept here. Okay, so that's the matrix. My timer has at, at three minutes left. So we're gonna get a little bit further along here. Okay, because what I'd wanna do now is I wanna fill my matrix. Random characters. So how will I fill it with random characters? Well, to do this, um, I think the last thing we'll do today is let's build a little method that creates random characters. And then we can use this on Monday to fill it up. Okay. So we're going to be using a method That one might also be useful to you in other programming problems, like depending on what you might do in a programming problem or might you, what you might do in some kind of project you're doing. You might realize, hey, I want random characters, random letters, random whatevers. So what if we made a thing that said character, um, character equals random, and we could define, just like when we define random numbers, we can maybe say, give me a character between A and Z. Okay. But instead of just putting these like this, okay, what I think I'll do is I'll back back up a bit and make character called the low character. And then maybe I'll make that the A. I did it with the numbers, except now I'm going to do it with letters. But again, that way I can change it. If I don't want it to be A to Z, if I want it to be like M to Z or whatever, I can do that. And then I'm going to give those as the two parameters between low and high. Now here's the problem. We don't have this method. You think we do, but the method we have gives us an integer, a random integer. So what we're going to do is we're going to overload this, okay? So believe it or not, NetBeans doesn't give us that option to overload it. So instead, let's just write it ourselves. We might be able to get this done before the period is out. At least not without comments, we could probably do it. All right. So let's build this random character method. It's actually pretty simple. It's one line of code. So private, static, void, random, character, oh comma, character, I. This is the method. It'll look like this, private, static, void, random. Oh, sorry, it's not void. It returns a character. My apologies. It returns a character, and it takes two characters as a parameter. That's what it does. Okay? Once this is keyed in, that will then make that error go away. Now it knows it can find a method that returns a random character to me. And it's one line of code. I return cast it as a character, the other version of random, which takes two integers. So to get two integers, I'm going to cast low as an integer, and I'm going to cast high as an integer. That was my alarm. So I am right at my time limit here. And that should do it. 
That should be a method to generate a random character. So I will be putting this up into GitHub in a second, but that's my uh, presentation for today for you guys. So um, I will be on the line if you guys have any questions about this. Give me a couple minutes to get it up on GitHub. I'll also get the video that I'm recording right now up on there. You have the remainder of the period. You can now start working on arrays programming problems if you want, start looking at them, trying them out. And you can also, if you still need to work on methods programming problems. But remember, my expectation for this week was for just you guys to get your feet sort of on the ground with working at home. So I don't really expect you guys to necessarily start working yet this week, next week maybe. So maybe just use the remainder of the period if you need to, to look over what we just did and make sure you understand it. And if you have any questions, come back on Teams and ask me. And if you don't have any questions and you feel like you've got it all down, I'm going to say to you guys, let's turn off the screen sharing. Have a great weekend. Uh, it's going to be nice weather. Um, and so now, if you want, um, the bad joke of the week. So um, bad jokes of the week are by definition bad, not good, not funny. Um, they're neither repeated nor explained. So if you don't like it, you don't get it, you don't hear it. It's not my fault. I would normally say at this point, you have the right to accept or reject it. But if you want to reject this joke, just go ahead and log off right now. So do you guys know why the ant fell off the toilet seat? Because he got pissed off. All right, everybody, have a good weekend. I will see you on Teams Monday.